What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Mooch Life. Today we are doing a truck vlog. We're going to take a little field trip to that Harbor Freight store, get us a little tool, and then we're going to do something very important right here in the driveway. Let's do a little start here on the truck. I didn't film this, but last week this guy was broke down for a whole week, two hours away from my house because the starter went bad. So I want you guys, all you Silverado owners, to listen to this starter when I remote start the truck right now and tell me if it sounds a lot beefier and better than the OEM starter that is put in these trucks. Sounds good, don't it? My original starter in this truck always started a little more laggy if you will than this truck does i noticed that after i got this new starter put in this is a car quest lifetime warranty starter i had installed it's a 200 hundred dollar part it cranks twice as fast as the original starter my truck did let me know guys uh, down in the comments do you think your starter was faster or beefier than that one did it crank quicker or is your original one a slow laggy douchebag that GM decides to put some crappy parts, but I digress. So let's get to the old Harbor Freight store here and uh, grab our tool because next week, right here on Mooch Life, we're taking you on vacation again. If you missed my Florida trip, it's in my playlist. And if, if you've seen that vlog, then you know we took the uh, Camaro down to Florida. So this field trip we're going on next week, we are taking this truck. So thank God the starter went out when it did versus when we were out of state because that would have been more of a hassle. Harbor, the freight, Harbor Freight, cheap tools. Let's get it. All right, guys, we got the Quinn half inch drive digital torque adapter. So we'll go over this real quick when we get home and explain to you guys what we're doing to the truck before vacation. Let's get back to the house. And just like that, guys, we are back home in the driveway. Let me show you what we got going on here. We've got our three ton Daytona jack and we have a couple jack stands right there. We got our bar to undo the lug nuts and we have our relearn tool, which I already did a video on this. If you want to check it out, you can check out my truck playlist right here on my channel. And if you haven't figured it out, what we're going to do today, we are going to rotate the tires right here in the driveway. It's not real hard if you have these simple tools. I actually have an electric uh, impact wrench. I'm not even gonna use it because uh, exercise. So uh, one thing you'll notice about my channel if you haven't been here before is I like to do my own oil changes. It makes me feel good inside, all, all buttery because I feel manly, I can change my own oil. So the issue that arises with doing your own oil changes, when do people rotate their tires? When they take it to the shop to get their oil changed, it goes hand in hand, it's the easiest thing to do. Oh yeah, give me an oil change, rotate my tires. Well, I just got these Geolander Yokohamas on here. Tread's looking real nice. These tires are actually pretty good. They got good reviews and they also uh, um, are quiet when I drive them for an all-terrain tire. And uh, they do well in the snow. I didn't get any footage this winter in the snow of it, unfortunately. But trust me, they are good tires. So if you're in the market for tires. And I also did a video on getting these tires you can check that out in the truck playlist as well I did a, a burnout right here in the driveway with my old Wrangler tires that were on here from factory so it's pretty funny um, but anyhow let's let's jack this up let me show you how I'm gonna rotate these tires uh, I'm gonna switch over to the GoPro so I can get into all the nooks and crannies so uh, let's get to it and, and rotate tires right here in the driveway uh, quick disclaimer do at your own risk this is a 2018 Silverado uh, it's meant to help Silverado owners. I'm sure it applies to many other vehicles. It's up to you to find your safe jack points and to use all the safety precautions that you need before you attempt to do this. So with that being said, let's get to it. 
All right, guys, so we switched over to the GoPro. So down low on the, on the rear tires here, so uh, the rotation pattern, you can look up on the Google machine. It's not real hard to figure out, but on this particular truck with the four-wheel drive, non-directional tires. Non-directional tires means that the tread is uh, the same when you flip the tire over. Some tires are directional. It'll be on the sidewall somewhere where it'll have an arrow pointing it, and then you'll notice it tread on all the directional tires. You see it a lot on sports cars and stuff where the tread pattern goes in one direction so like from here over and then from here over to here if you flip the tire around it's the same where you'll notice that directional tires all the grooves like go the same exact way they all face like forward so if you flip the tire around to the other side of the vehicle they'll be facing upwards and backwards and they won't expel the elements like you're supposed to and you won't get traction it can lead to uh, early wear as well so be mindful of that these are non-directional tires four-wheel drive truck so the direction of of rotation for these is <clears throat> the easiest way is if you're at the back of the vehicle both back tires go straight forward so this tire is going to go up front the tire on the other side there is going to go up front to that side and then the two front tires do, 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 do. The two front tires, they go to the rear, but they crisscross. So the front driver will go to the back passenger and the front passenger will go to the back driver. Just Google your make and model or look in your owner's manual and you will see which pattern you wanna do. There's also a pattern to rotate with your spare tire that you can follow. I'm not doing that because my spare tire does not have a wheel on it. It's got a generic black wheel. So um, I shouldn't say it doesn't have a wheel. It has the generic black wheel, so it doesn't match. I don't have a matching fifth wheel. So if you did, you could rotate with the spare as well. And there's also a, a picture of that pattern. So, so the first thing we're gonna do here is uh, crack the lugs on the front driver tire so let me do that exercise baby all right so we cracked all six lug nuts We put the jack stand closer to the tire and jacked it up farther back. The tire is off the ground barely, you can see it spinning. I guess to be extra safe, I'm gonna throw another jack stand under here. Just let me go ahead and crank it up a little bit more. All right, so we got two jack stands under there tires off the ground so we can go ahead and take this tire off if you remember the pattern we have to go to the back passenger all right so we're underneath the back of the truck now and we're gonna jack right in front of the rear diff cover do not jack right here because you don't want to bend this right in front of it so here's the back and then right in front of it the metal there this waffle weave looking you can put your jack pad right there lift the back end straight up it'll bring both back tires off the ground and then we can continue and then when I lift the back is it gonna mess with the front I hope not if it does, then the front of the truck's gonna fall on the ground. 
and that would not be good, right? <laughs> so we're going to take our time. I want this to not be a, an epic fail type of video. Okay, it looks like this wheel is off the ground and we are still on the front jack stands. All right, so I got all the rear lugs off. I did decide to bust out the electric impact gun because laziness and uh, we'll go ahead and take this tire off. You're loose. Ugh. And then we'll just set that tire aside. And we'll take our first tire, which was the front driver. And we'll put it right on here. I tightened all the lugs up, not all the way to spec. That's why we bought our little torque tool adapter. I just got them on there snug. I did the cross pattern. So if you guys don't know, you know, tighten this one up first. Don't go in a, in a circle, you gotta go opposite. So you do here, and you do here, and you do here, and then you do here, and you do here, and you do here. And then it keeps everything like lined up good or whatever. So that's that. Now we can go ahead and let her down in the back. All right, well, the truck still hasn't fallen yet. We're in good shape. So we moved the passenger rear tire there. Now we're gonna jack up the front passenger get that tire off the ground after we're done jacking that up get those lugs all the way off I already cracked them we'll throw this tire there then this tire is going to go back there so we'll have to jack up the back one more time and then once we do that that tire will go up front and we'll be all done so I got this one off the ground you can see it's spinning I decided I wanted to come over here and just double check my jack stands which Obviously they have to be working or else the truck would have fallen, but you can tell that they're still on the frame. They're still doing their job. So that's good. We're not messing up the truck. <laughs> I know many of you guys might watch this and say, you should have just jacked it up on all fours. I was thinking about doing like one jack on each side of the front, getting the whole front off the ground, then going and doing the rear diff like I did having all four off the ground but it just seemed kind of sketchy to me and I figured this one wheel at a time version was a little bit safer if you're not on a completely flat surface and you have the truck off the ground completely and then your jack decides to start to roll which my driveway is pretty flat but if it just so happened to start to roll forward you're gonna have a, a wheelless machine starting to coast down your driveway until the jack slipped out and then the whole truck would be on the ground i guess so i'm just being safe and doing it this one tire at a time deal let me know in the comments what you think if i'm doing this uh appropriately All right. So I was saying, you just get your lugs, spin them on. See how the tire just sits on there all loose. That's why I like when you once you get them snugged up, you want to go in that star pattern so that they all tighten, and then seat the wheel against the hub in a proper fashion. So. Just hand tighten them get that all done and then i crank them in the star pattern with the bar just a little bit not the torque spec we'll do that once the car is on the ground at the end if you remember the pattern it goes to the back driver side so the easy thing to remember when you're doing this is you put your jacks under the front driver that stays blank the whole time it's the last tire you do so you just follow the pattern around and then when you get back to your floor jacks that's your last bit so we're gonna put this here then she goes up there and then we're done so
carefully take your jack stands out. And then let her down. All four tires have been rotated. Now it's time to bust open our wrench torque adapter here. Show you how that works. So here we go. We got our adapter. It comes with extensions. This is a half inch drive, but it comes with the two adapters here. So you can go smaller. So that's pretty cool. And that's why I chose this versus just buying a torque wrench. I already have one that goes to like, it's like 20 to hundred pounds. Um, I'm going to torque these lugs to 140 foot pounds because that's what it says on the internet. You know, is it one of those things like, do you have to torque the lugs? I don't know. Tell me in the comments what you think. I vote yes because, you know, I like things to spec. It just feels safer that way. But like some people might tell you, if you don't know how to tighten a lug nut tight enough, then, you know, you're a loser. But, you know, if you don't put them tight enough, you risk them getting loose and then you'll get a wobbly tire. You might lose a lug nut, break down on the side of the road. If they're too tight, get the tire stuck on there. You might damage the lug nut itself or the, the, the stud that it goes on potentially, I guess. So why not do it to spec? And they had a, a torque wrench that went to 150 pounds. But I didn't want to buy it because it was the half inch drive, but this has the adapter, so it's kind of cool. Um, they're supposed to be pretty darn accurate. People actually use these to test against their ratchets, their uh, torque ratchets. So, but I'm going to use it to actually ratchet. So, we'll just take it out here and we'll get our half inch drive. I don't really know how to use it. I guess you just turn it on and then. It comes up pound feet if you can see it there so just like put this in here like so all right and then we'll put the socket on the other end of it and then i guess we if we hit the plus button oh there look we can change it so we're going to put this up to 140 pounds Hopefully you can see that. There, 140 pounds. And then we'll go ahead and just tighten these to 140 pounds. So I don't think I'm gonna have enough torque with my short wrench. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Take this off. I should fit over that. Yeah, there we go. Beeped a little bit. See, it's doing this where it shows how much you've put on it, but I wanted to show the maximum that I've pushed 120 there we go there we go 140 that's pretty cool actually so we'll do our star pattern Ooh, a couple pounds over, that's okay. See, it doesn't click, so it doesn't stop you from over torquing, but you just once you start hearing the beeps go slower. Yeah. And it's, and it's actually not, not even as much as you'd think. Huh, that's pretty cool. I actually like that a lot. Where was I? I was on that one. All right, so there it is. 140 pound feet all the way around. Just finished that up. Couldn't get enough leverage. I mean, I didn't try super hard, but I just decided to throw the bar from my Daytona wrench on it so I can get 
you know, use it like a breaker bar and uh, get the good torque spec on there. That machine was pretty cool. It's supposed to be darn accurate right out of the box within 0.5% of all the tolerances or whatever. There's a paper somewhere. I think it flew away though. So when you open up the, the inspection paper, it gives you this like certification that you can read it there tells you like that they did the error percentage for different so it's like the margin of error is like less than one hundredth of a percent or one tenth of a percent on a high torque and then there's a mid and a low nonetheless it's pretty darn accurate so and then like i said it comes with these two things this product was 30 bucks at harbor freight it's pretty cool it comes with take it out here batteries pre-installed or just like a little sticker on the back you have to pull out so the battery starts working it shuts off automatically if you haven't used it for a couple minutes and then get your cool little carrying case nice little product 30 bucks 20 dollars. i could have got the pittsburgh actual uh ratchet you know torque torque wrench and it was ten dollars cheaper but it's the half inch drive you know i mean i have you know, I have adapters, but I, I just thought this was cool that it came with the smaller one and, and that one. I don't know sizes. I'm stupid. The tools. I'm a rookie over here. But nonetheless, it was just a cool little product. I thought it would be neat to pick up. The other product I picked up, which I made a video on this already. If you haven't seen it, check out my truck playlist. Or I'll go ahead and just link the video up there. It was this guy right here. Got it on Amazon. And this is the tire relearn tool for the... Uh, for the um what do you call it? the tpms sensors the the tire pressure monitor system so when you go through the menus here and i showed this in my other video you have your tire pressure system there now that is inaccurate now because we switched the tire they show the pressures on each tire but they are incorrect because we just rotated so we fix that by doing our relearn and the way we do that is I believe we hard press the check mark button for a couple seconds and then the beep beep and it says tire learning active and then like I said I did show this in another video but it was on the Camaro Camaro sitting in, in the garage there I just uh, wanted to get those those tires on the Camaro done before we went on our Florida trip which was last month and I didn't rotate those tires but they're just a completely different set of tires and I swapped them from the factory and I never relearned it so finally picked up this tool so now that the tire learning active is on we just turn this sucker on it blinks for the G which means GM because it also does Ford products it's hard to see but our headlight is lit up on this one you start with the driver front you go down to the valve stem and then right on the tire here it beeps it tells you that it switched it to match inside and then you come over here hit the button it beeps again then you come back to the the uh, passenger back this light is now lit up lets you know I already know the order click the button beeps again and then finally the uh, back driver click it and then it does the double beep again it tells you you're done and now you can tell that it's switched because the one tire is lower than the rest so that ladies and gentlemen completes the tire change I hope you enjoy the video. Can you rotate your own tires with just a couple jack stands and a, and a Daytona jack from Harbor Freight? Yes, you can. Do at your own risk. Like I said, I was kind of sketched out a little bit because I'm not real good with working on things. But with the tire off and the jack stands under there and then lifting from the back, I, for some reason I always get scared that the jack stand's going to slip from under the truck, which probably is virtually impossible, but I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, 
we got it done and we are ready for our vacation which is coming up next week we're coming along that'll be on my life stuff playlist so if you check out my channel and you enjoy my content you'll realize that i do different things i have different playlists so you can you know browse through them check them out but uh the truck's been getting some love here and uh and that's about it so uh make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe i'm mooch this is mooch life peace out Oh, my God.